Hello boys and girls. Time for another story. And this time we're celebrating a holiday in February. One besides Valentine's. There's another holiday that takes place the third Monday of February each year. Do you know what it is? Hmm. I'll tell you. It's uh, President's Day. Uh, on Monday, the third Monday of the month is President's Day when we celebrate uh, the leader of our country. And the leader of the country, our president, is chosen by the people because the United States is a democracy. And the president of the United States is one of the most powerful people in the whole world. So President's Day honors American presidents. Two of America's most famous uh, and greatest leaders were born in February. Do you know who those two presidents are? Right, George Washington, our first president, was born on February 22nd, 1732. And Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, was born on February 12th. So to make today's story fun, or information fun, we were gonna, we're gonna look at some presidential trivia. Instead of just giving a history, we're gonna look at some funny things that happened during these presidents' uh, time in office. For example, George Washington, who was our very first president. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to answer it. Why was Washington the only president who didn't live in Washington, D.C.? Do you know? Well, the city wasn't built yet. Washington chose the site of the capital that was named to honor him, but he himself lived in the temporary capitals of New York and Philadelphia. So that's where the U.S. capitals were before. And then they built the beautiful Washington, D.C., which is Washington, D.C. stands for District of Columbia. So he never got a chance to live in the White House. And the next question is, why didn't President uh, Washington ever get a toothache? Hmm, do you know that one? Well, by the time that Washington became pres president, he had only one tooth of his own. A rumor said that his false teeth were made out of wood, but actually they were made of elephant and walrus tusk and of a cow, hippo, and even some human teeth. Ooh, what a mouthful he must have had. That's not, that's not too kosher, is it? Well, John Adams was our second president, and Adams passed away on the 4th of July, 1826, exactly 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. You remember, the Declaration of Independence was, was from Great Britain when we fought the Revolutionary War. We were freed and we're the, it was the Declaration of Independence. It was his idea, this is John Adams, that he wanted a big celebration on the 4th of July every year with games Sports, guns, bells, parades, bonfires, fireworks, anything that could take place should take place because that was a big celebration of our freedom from Europe, from uh, Great Britain. So therefore, he wanted all of that and he also passed away on the 4th of July. So that's an interesting one. How about uh, Thomas Jefferson? You've heard a lot about Thomas Jefferson. He was a great inventor, remember that. He invented, some of the things he invented were the swivel chair, like people use it in office, it swivels around. He, he uh, also invented a type of pedometer, which kept track of uh, how much you walked. Uh, a walking stick, uh, well the pedometer, yeah, a walking stick that unfolded into a chair. You've seen that, I thought it was pretty modern. He invented that and a system of dollars and cents. And he was also a gentleman who spoke six languages. I'm always telling you how wonderful it is to at least speak two languages because then you're worth two people. He spoke six languages. He was a talented musician and he loved to dance. He was a self-taught, self-taught architect, a builder of homes. He didn't go to school for it. He was self-taught, and he built his own home called Monticello, and it was a beautiful, beautiful place. And he designed the University of Virginia. 
Believe it or not, President Jefferson was all of these things, and he was. they say he was the most gifted president. He had an unlimited curiosity about the world around him, and he owned a huge library. And he always said, I cannot live without books. Oh boy, that's a man after my own heart. Can you imagine having a huge library? And do you know what President Jefferson had in common with President John Adams? Well, both ex-presidents that were already out of office died on the same day, the 4th of July, 1826. Both presidents on the same day, the same year, passed away, just hours apart. I find that really interesting trivia. Well, our next president, was uh, the fourth president, was James Madison. And his friends would say that he was no bigger than a half piece of soap. I wonder why. Well, probably because he stood only five feet four inches tall, and he weighed less than a hundred pounds, making him America's smallest president ever. Can you imagine? Well, and during his time, too, uh, soon after the White House was built, the they named it, well, do you know why they named it the White House? Probably because... Uh, the, pre the newspaper reporters started calling the president's home the White House because it was painted white. <laughs> so good thing it wasn't painted uh, blue with red polka dots or something, huh? But that was, the White House was named white because it was painted white. Makes a lot of sense. Um, the other president, that James Monroe, who served from 1817 to 1825, he was the third president to die on the 4th of July. He died in 1831, five years after John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, but also right on the 4th of July. Three presidents. President John Quincy Adams was our sixth president. And wait a minute, didn't we just say that John Adams was already a president? Well, he was. But this was John Adams' son, John Quincy Adams. He was the first, uh, John Quincy Adams was the first president to be the son of another president. Okay? Young, young John had an exciting childhood. When he was eight years old, he watched the battle at Bunker Hill, the first real, fi the real fighting of the Revolutionary War. Then he worked with his father in Europe. John Quincy always knew that he wanted to be president one day. And his father was president, and later on he was president when he got old enough to run for president. So that he was the first father's son. So that was interesting about John Quincy Adams. Oh, let's see, how about, about, uh, what's his name here? William Henry Harrison. He was our ninth president, and uh, he served in uh, 1841, and he had the longest and the shortest of any presidency. By that I mean he gave, Harrison gave the longest inauguration speech in presidential history. It lasted nearly two hours. Inauguration day was cold and rainy because it takes place on the 20th of January, when it's time to inaugurate a uh, president, January 20th, which is very cold in Washington. But, and Harrison didn't even wear a coat. Well, he died of pneumonia 31 days later. His term was the shortest of any president. 31 days he was president. And then he gave the longest uh, speech. Can you imagine the other people having to sit there? Well, that was an interesting one. Let's see if we find another president to talk about. How about Zachary Taylor? He was our 19th president. And somebody asked him if uh, uh, cherries and milk was a good summertime treat. And he said, yes, they were. So what he did, well, it is a good snack for some people, not President Taylor. After spending a hot summer day at the Washington Monument, now Washington can be really hot in the summer, but after he spent a hot day at the Monument, the President ate a big bowl of cherries 
and drank a pitcher full of cold milk. He died five days later of sunstroke and or food poisoning. No one knows which. So don't ever eat a big bowl of cherries and a big pitcher full of cold milk on a hot summer day. We don't know what could happen. Well, we have Millard Fillmore, our 13th president. The Underground Railroad wasn't a real railroad, but a network of very, very courageous people who helped slaves secretly travel from the south where the slave where the slaves uh, lived, most of them lived, and went, they traveled up to the north, where the people in the northern part of the United States at that time did not really believe in slavery. So they would be taken secretly through a chain of, of different people to travel from the south to the north. In 1850, President Fillmore, the one we're discussing, signed the Fugitive Slave Act which made it illegal to help a slave run away and required officials to return escaped slaves to their owners. He was actually pro-slavery. He believed in slavery and keeping uh, the African Americans enslaved. And so he passed a law that made it illegal to help them escape to the North. So I don't know about that, President. The other one that we had was, let's see here, Franklin Pierce, 14th president. Pierce was so good at giving speeches that he memorized all 3,319 words of his inaugural speech. That would be like memorizing the first 17 pages of this book, and I mean memorizing every word. He had a photographic memory. Can you imagine memorizing that much? He was quite a president. Then we are going to talk a little bit about Abraham Lincoln, one of my favorite presidents. Do you know what Abraham Lincoln helped build when he was only seven years old? His family's new log cabin in Indiana. That's what he helped build at the age of nine. The family had just moved from their one room dirt floor log cabin in Kentucky where Lincoln was born. Young Lincoln had only one year of formal schooling, but he read every book he could get his hands on. He had jobs as a ferry boat captain, postmaster, country store clerk, and he was a self-taught lawyer. And he always said, from my, by from my boyhood up, it was my ambition and my dream to be president. What have I always told you? If you can dream it, you can achieve it. So he was quite the president. Uh, he was America's tallest president. He was six feet four inches, but he looked even taller when he wore his stovepipe hat. It's a tall hat in which he kept some of his important papers in that hat, believe it or not. <laughs> That would be real funny if a windstorm came along, blew his hat away, and all his important papers flew. Well, do you know what happened five days after the Union won the Civil War? Because Abraham Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Civil War, where the North and the South fought to end slavery and to see who was going to run the country. And so five days after the North during part of the United States, the Union won the Civil War, President Lincoln was assassinated by an actor named John Wilkes Booth. Assassinated means he was killed by this man. Booth, who wanted the Confederacy to win the war, he wanted the South to win the war, shot the president during a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Lincoln, at that time, was the first president to be assassinated. And it was just because somebody was angry because they didn't win the war. Sad, huh? Well, let's see here. James Garfield, he was our 20th president. And do you know what he did for the last 10 weeks of his presidency? Well, he lay in bed. Garfield had been president for less than four months when he was shot by one of his own people, one of his own friends. The man thought that his loyalty should have been 
the man who had supported him during his campaign thought that he should have been chosen for a government job. But Garfield, James Garfield, President Garfield, believed that jobs should go to deserving people, not to friends and supporters. He, um, he lived for 11 weeks after he was shot, but doctors couldn't save him. So he died also. Um, so you could say that he was the second president assassinated, and he died 11 weeks after he was shot. And you know how old President Garfield was when he learned to read? You're not going to believe this. He was just three years old. Three years old when he learned to read. And he was, uh, he was a teacher and then a college professor before becoming president. And I'm noticing a thread among these presidents about books and reading. The majority of them were book lovers and loved to read. And the more you read, the more you learn, right? Um, what else do we have here? Chester Arthur, President Chester Arthur in 1881 to 1885. Do you know what sport President uh, Arthur was uh, hooked on? <laughs> Fishing! President Arthur was one of the best fishermen in America. An 80-pound bass he caught off the coast of Rhode Island was one of the biggest fish ever caught in that region. The fish was probably as big as you guys are. And he was a great fisherman, so he enjoyed sports. That's wonderful. Let's go on here to Theodore Roosevelt. They used to call him, um, well, just Theodore Roosevelt. He was president, and do you know what he liked to do after he would, a busy day at the White House all day working? Well, he would jog around the Washington Monument, which is one of the tallest monuments. I believe it's 666 feet tall. Very, very tall monument. And he would uh, run around the, uh, the monument. Having been a weak and sickly child, Roosevelt was a very active adult. He played tennis, practiced judo, took boxing lessons, hiked, hunted, swam, and he climbed mountains. And he did all of that. Um, he was also a, uh, was, he was just 42 years old when, he, when President McKinley died, and he's still the youngest man to have held office of the U.S. president. So when McKinley died, he took over as president. He was only 42 years old. So he is considered the youngest man uh, to have, the youngest person to have been president. And uh, here's another one for you, some trivia. Roosevelt read two or three books a day. He wrote quite a few, too, on literature, history, hunting, the wilderness, America, and ranch life. He wrote books, read three books, two or three books a day. He must have been a real speed reader. That's a, re a reader. That's all I can say. And let me go to somebody else. Let's see. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, I believe they were cousins. Uh, he was our 32nd president, and he, he was a very superstitious man. He wouldn't sit at a table of 13 people, and he refused to leave for a trip on a Friday. Even though he traveled quite a bit, he'd never leave on a Friday. He just knew something was going to go wrong. Um... Let's see, what else do you know that what he rode around in in the White House? It wasn't a skateboard. There weren't any. It wasn't an airplane or a roller coaster. He rode a wheelchair in the White House because he had uh, to use a wheelchair or braces because his legs were paralyzed by polio when he was 39 years old. It was a horrible disease at that time. And the only thing that eradicated it, got rid of polio, was uh, vaccinations. But he did get polio and he lost uh, control of his legs. So that was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Let me see who else might be really interesting. Another reader, Harry Truman, our 33rd president. He read every book in the Independence Missouri Library. By the time he was 15, by the time he was 15, 
can you imagine? I mean, I love to read, but I can't even imagine reading that many books. Wow, I tell you, that's wonderful. Uh, 35th President, John F. Kennedy. I'm sure most of you have read about John F. Kennedy. He was the first president to have been a Boy Scout. He was the first president to have been a Catholic. And he was the youngest president to be elected to office. Okay? And the uh, Delano, what was it? Uh, I think it was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or one of the Roosevelts, became uh, president at a really, really young age, but he was already vice president and moved into president. But Kennedy was the first president to be elected at an early age. Uh, but what shocked a country the most, I remember I was a junior in high school when he was assassinated. He was assassinated during a parade in Dallas, Texas by a man named Lee Harvey Oswald. America was stunned by the loss of this young president who seemed to be doing many great things for the country. And uh, I remember that day so clearly. It's, it's amazing how uh, something like that sticks to your mind, to your head. Uh, the other president that I really have a lot of respect for is Jimmy Carter, who is still alive. Jimmy Carter is close to 100, I believe. I didn't look it up. I should have. He's, I think he's close to 100 years old. He was uh, a very humble man. He was a peanut farmer in Georgia. He grew peanuts. And he also was a speed reader who could read and understand everything read. He could read 2,000 words per minute. 2,000 words per minute. This is all so amazing. But he was a great reader. <clears throat> like I said, he was a humble man. And uh, President Carter sold off the yacht and the limousines that they had for the president because they had uh, they had access to big boat, the yacht, and to a big limousine to take him everywhere. And he got rid of them because he said he didn't think the president should be treated any differently from other people. Carter made sure everyone called him Jimmy, not James Earl Carter. He sometimes carried his own luggage, and he told his bodyguards to stop opening the doors for him. He said, I can open them. Carter believed in human rights, and he worked for peace around the world. And amazing Jimmy Carter went on after he left the presidency to work with Habitat for Humanity and has helped build many, many homes in Georgia. And uh, just an amazing, humble president. Uh, Ronald Reagan was another one of our presidents. Uh, he was an actor, a movie star, before becoming president. He, um, let's see, what did, oh, that he was also a victim of, of, uh, of an assassination, but he, he survived. He, after a madman tried to kill him uh, outside a Washington hotel in 1981, he was, he was shot in the chest, but he survived. Although the, sh uh, the shooting was serious, Reagan made people smile when he joked, I just forgot to duck out of the way. Since then, presidents often wear bulletproof vests in public, and America's president is one of those heavily guarded men, or one of these days, women in the United States. So the last president I want to discuss today uh, is uh, Clinton. I know most of you have heard of William uh, Jefferson Clinton. He was our 42nd president. And um, do you know when he started practicing to be president? Do you know? No? Okay, I didn't know either. Clinton always knew he wanted to be president one day. He ran for so many offices in his high school uh, student government that his principal said he couldn't run for any more. No more. No more. As a teenager, William Jefferson Clinton shook hands with President Kennedy at the White House. That had to have been an amazing experience to have shaken President Kennedy's hand. So Clinton went on to become our 42nd president. And we do have one more that the book covers, which is George W. Bush. Uh, George, um, let me see which one just, you know what, we did have 
George Bush, I forgot him, our 41st president, and he um, was our president 1989 to 1993, and do you know what he put President Bush banned from the White House? No more at the White House? I'll give you a little hint. It looks like tiny little green trees. Broccoli, it's broccoli. President Bush said, I'm the president of the United States and I'm not going to eat any more broccoli. That made broccoli growers so mad, they sent him truckloads of the vegetable and he didn't know what to do with it. That George Bush, well, President Clinton came into office and then when President Clinton finished his two terms as president, George W. Bush was elected. And George W. Bush had something in common with John Quincy Adams, America's sixth president. Do you remember? Well, George W. Bush is the second American president to be the son of a former president. See, when he was elected, his father, the first president, Bush, started calling him Quincy just as a joke. And to avoid confusion with his father, many people called him W. He was George W. Bush, and so he was a uh, president. And um, do you know what he wanted to be when he grew up? He didn't want to be a president. He wanted to be a major league baseball player. Though his t dream never came true, Bush did own part of the Texas Rangers professional baseball team until 1998. And uh, the, the president has a collection of 250 signed baseballs. They must have a room just for all these baseballs. Isn't that great? And that was George, George W. Bush. Then after George W. Bush, can you guess who became our president, our 40, uh, fourth president? Barack Obama. He was the first black man to become, to be president of this country. And then after Obama, we had um, Donald Trump. And then he was, he served one term, was impeached twice. And then Biden uh, became, uh, uh, became president. And he is our current president. And as soon as I find some trivia on those three presidents, I'm going to give them to you, even though we're not doing President's Day story again this year. But I will, I will read that to you, okay? So after all those presidents, could you be president one day? Now that's a silly question. Of course you could. Si se puede, I've told you many times. But you're going to have to wait till you're 35 years old. The U.S. Constitution also says that you must have been born a U.S. citizen of this country, and you have to be 35. But you can, after you turn 18 years old, my little ones, you can, as any American citizen can, you can register to vote. Because remember, your vote, your voice. This is the most important responsibility you have when you turn 18, to sign up, to vote, and make a difference. You can have a voice with your vote. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our stories today of uh, the presidents, not all of them. We don't have the time, but... Uh, I want to wish you a very happy President's Day, and keep on learning, but more importantly, keep on reading, checking out those books, and the more you read, the more you learn, remember? And you can also be President one day, and we will have a female President one of these days. Okay? Thank you for listening to the story.